Your most impactful statement for me, other than quit polishing that turd, is look like a bag of money. Yours is very wise advice that's easy to remember. Thank you. You're very welcome. Now, I'm going to expand on what both these things mean in more detail. So what does it mean to look like a bag of money? Because many of you have scripts that you want to sell to a studio or you have a script that you want to raise money from investors so you can shoot the thing. That's not looking like a bag of money. That's looking for a bag of money. And there's a huge difference. So instead of walking around saying, hey, give me 500000 for this or 50000 for this, instead, take your own $500 and shoot the damn thing yourself. Well, how do you do that? Well, you go to your local film school and there you will find kids who are willing to work for free just for the experience. And you can find actors, you can find uh, you know, DPs, camera operators, all those kids are willing to work for free. And the $500 is for you to rent the equipment, okay? But there's a catch. None of them are gonna wanna work for free if your script stinks. They don't wanna sit on that turd with you. So instead, you better have something that sings. And how do you do that? Well, you can, you're welcome to come to my free screenwriting webinars. I'll post a link to that at the end of the video. I do them every few weeks. All right, now what do you do? You shoot the thing. You can either enter it into a, uh, a prestigious contest and win. Now you start looking like a bag of money. Or you could just put it up on social media because the minute you start, if it's really good, it's not going to be hard to gather hundreds of thousands or even millions of people who, who watch it. You can either monetize that way or you can take this thing that you shot for $500 and you take it to investors and you, and you say, look, look what I was able to do for only $500. Imagine what I could do for $5,000. Now you look like a bag of money and they're going to see that. Well, wow, yeah, I, I'll invest in this person because they can do something amazing for very little money. That's how you look like a bag of money. What about quit polishing that turd? Okay. Many of you have scripts that you've been working on for six years and you take it out every few months, you dust off all the cobwebs and you start clacking away and you're agonizing, is it good or is it bad? I don't know, but I'm working on it. That's called polishing a turd. Instead, get it into a shape that you think it's good enough. Now set it aside and start your second script. Do that over and over again until you have 10 scripts. It may take you years, but I guarantee you after 10 scripts, script number 10 is gonna be light years better than script number one that you thought was so amazing. That's just how you get better. That applies to everybody who's a writer. It's just the repetition. So instead of polishing that turd, continue writing more and more things. This applies to everyone, including me. So many of you know I have a book out. It's called The Paper Orchestra. It's a collection of true short stories. It's, it's personal essays. And I've been working on it, well, for about four and a half years. Now, I'm a professional television writer. I know how to write stories. And you know, writing in this new genre it's, it's not like night and day. I mean, at the end of the day, it's story is story. And this is why it's not too hard to adapt a book into a movie because it's, it's a still a story. It's not like adapting a carton of eggs into a movie. That would be hard. Story is story. But at the end of the day, I still had to figure out, or even at the beginning of the day, I had to figure out what my voice was. And by that, I mean how I was going to tell the stories. What was the tone that I was going to shoot for? Because that I had to discover on my own. So I start writing the first story. I get it in good enough shape. You know, I'm talking about maybe 10, 20, 30 drafts. I put it aside. I write the second and the third. And now after two years, I got about 20 plus stories. And then I went back to those early stories and I discovered that my tone had shifted. I had matured as a writer, even though I'm a professional writer, I, I had matured. So I went back. I spent another several months rewriting those early stories so that they had the same tone as the last ones, which is kind of what I was, you know, what I really wanted to put out there. And that's what it means to stop polishing a turd. Now, let's talk about looking like a bag of money because halfway through this thing, you know, it kind of occurs to me that who's gonna buy a book by me? No one knows who I am. I don't look like a bag of money yet. So now I gotta build an audience so I would look like a bag of money, right? And that meant going on social media and posting every day, sharing all my tips, all my wisdom for free to build up followers, people who like what I had to say. And so, if you like any of this wisdom, by the way, you know, well, you can, I have merch. Like I have I, all these witty aphorisms are written on mugs and t-shirts and notebooks. You can go get them here, michaeljammon.com slash merch. You can also sign up for my free webinar here, michaeljammon.com slash webinar. But to be honest, what I really hope you'll do, I hope you'll support me. I hope you'll go get my book because this is what this has all been about. And this is the, my writing that is to me, the most dear, it's the most intimate. I think it's the most entertaining. I think of everything I've, I've ever written in my career, I think it's the best. I hope you'll go, you go get it because uh, I want you to look like a bag of money too. But this is where you start. All of this is a lot of work and it's worth it.
All right, look like a bag of money. Go grab a paper orchestra. Thank you so much for all your support and for helping me the way I hope I've been helping you.